Hey guys, Omni here. I want to give you guys my thoughts on Ghost of Tsushima since I finally finished this game after putting well over 100 hours into this game to unlock everything, to get all the trophies, and just really live in this world for all that it's worth. And I still want to go back for more. You know, I really wish this game had a new game plus mode because sadly it doesn't at this point. I feel like that might be something they add on the road later because I'd love to go back through this game with all my unlockables, all my techniques, armor sets and dyes and stuff like that and just kind of, you know, have this freedom going back through the game. However, in a recent update, they did add a higher difficulty. So I might just start from scratch and go through it in that. You know, I did initially start this game over on Twitch, but, you know, as you all know, tragedy struck. And again, I want to thank you all so much for your understanding and uh, condolences that everybody gave me and all that. You guys were amazing, and I really appreciate you guys. This game also, you know, I ended up taking this game offline and finishing it, uh, you know, off stream and like that. And it really helped because this game, I felt, was very therapeutic in a lot of ways not just from the combat and getting out some of that frustration in this senseless visceral violence, but also because of the, just the nature and the wildlife and the setting itself is so tranquil, quiet, reflective, serene, and meditative in a way. When you're just on your horse going across this vast countryscape of fields of grass, flowers, crops, trees, forests, mountains, snowy fields, there's just, this game has every type of environment, and it's so beautiful. The color saturation in this game is fantastic. The particle effects, the, the foliage density, everything about this game is designed to immerse you in this world. The sound design, there's even frogs, crickets, deer, boar, bears, birds, as well as just random encounters when you're going down the road over this war-torn island. You know, as much as there's always this stuff going on in the background, the, the things that remind you of the war that is going on from these outside invaders, there's always a section of the map where you can get away and forget about all of that, from these hot springs to these shrines to finding these fox dens and following them to their hidden hideouts and all this stuff. There's so many things that this game just really does well. And surprisingly enough, this is from a Western developer. and you know, making this game set in Japan based around Japanese culture and it feels so authentic. And I can't speak for how authentic it is. I could just speak for the feeling that it gives me when I'm playing it. Um, and a lot of the inspiration comes from the older Kurosawa films. There's even a Kurosawa mode that you can activate in this, which is more of like a film filter. It does a lot of things in the background as well. It, it, it makes everything black and white. It even dampens some of the sound a little bit to give it a more of a older film kind of vibe to it and it even has like the film grain and the imperfections popping in and out of the screen to kind of evoke that kind of old film style but i gotta say like i would save that for a second playthrough third playthrough something like that because i honestly feel like as cool as that is and as awesome as it is to kind of give a nod to kurosawa himself I think you're doing yourself a disservice by taking the colors out of this game because it is beautiful. You know, I'm not one for photo modes or stopping and taking a screenshot or anything like that, but there was a couple of times in this game where I did. I stopped and I just sat there and took in the environment. And, you know, especially being in quarantine and stuff like that, uh, this is... This is kind of like living vicariously through these video game characters as video games are meant to evoke in this point. But like just being able to get out like that and like experience this world, you know, from your home was just beautiful and amazing. It was very felt timely. It felt um, really lived in. I mean, as you're just trotting along on your horse, you can come across, you know, strangers uh, who are need saving or helped from the invaders or various activities. There's a lot of different side quests that you come across helping people from all walks of life, from people in abusive relationships, abusive families, people who are lost, kidnapped. There's so many things as you're playing as this samurai, Jin Sakai, who is the sole survivor aside from his uncle who was held captive after this huge loss at the beginning of the game against the Mongol Empire. He's the only person left surviving after that onslaught. And he has to come together, recruit some old friends, and pull together this band of misfits 
to try to do the best they can at any means necessary, even at the sacrifice of your own honor and soul, to save the people you are sworn to protect and save your land and your people. And this game just goes through the gamut of emotions, man. It, it's, it can be rough. It definitely takes itself seriously. It has some lighter moments here and there, but this game is very much about its period, about its time, and about this culture. And this idea of how how far do you sac how much do you sacrifice for the greater good of your people? Like how selfless will you be to save the people you care about, the people you swore to protect, and you know the faults of this system that has been in place for all this time. It's very much I don't know. It it definitely gives me like this might be an off comparison, but it gives me kind of the vibes of the way that the Dark Knight ended. You know, this might not be the hero we need, but the hero we deserve, or whatever the line was. I can't remember, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, this journey that you go through with these characters that join your cast, they, who all have their own layers, their own depth, their own nuances to them. Uh, they serve their roles. They have some of the archetypical, uh, archetypical characters that you typically see in these types of things, but they're all so unique and different and just really fleshed out that they each have their own tales that you can go on to. It's not necessary to complete the story, but it definitely helps. I think like even the side quests, the ones that are just have nothing to do with the story, completely detached are just, they, they serve a purpose for building out this world. It, the world building in this game is phenomenal. Um, you know, the, there's just so much to do from, Finding, like I said, these shrines to, that give you various abilities, these uh, saving and liberating these towns from the occup uh, the oc from occupation from these outside forces, uh, and you can choose how you go about it, man. Because the combat, there's two different ways you can approach this the game. You can approach it like it's an Assassin's Creed game. You know, there's a stealth a stealth aspect that comes into play with it, and you can either choose to play the game stealthily and try to take out as many people as you can quietly and through various other tactics, or you can do it the samurai way and just do it head on. You can even do these samurai style standoffs where you call out, you sheathe your weapon, and then you wait for the right moment to strike, ending your opponent in single blow. And even coming down to these various moments throughout the game where you have these very stylized, uh, samurai kurosawa like standoffs against a one-on-one -on -one opponent that are just gorgeous and just intricate in every way shape and form that this uh i i can gush over this game forever this game was fantastic i can find very few flaws with it i've seen some people have a couple of glitches and stuff in here and there but honestly i only really came across one or two where you know i, I was fighting an enemy and uh it was one of the bigger brutes uh, something happened during one of the animations and I just got launched into the sky. I honestly cracked up laughing. I was still alive, but then I died from the impact once my character finally landed. It was one of the few times anything weird actually happened. Uh, the game, for all of its beauty, all of its intricate backgrounds, environments, and details, for the most part, runs so smooth. I didn't have any frame pr uh, problems. I'm playing on a PS4 Pro. Uh, I didn't really have any technical issues with the game whatsoever, aside from one or two glitches that happened like that. And then phasing myself and a horse through a building. <laughs> um, the combat system in the game is very, very layered as well. The, you have multiple stances which work uh, in different ways against different opponents. Some stances which you're meant to kind of switch and weave in and out of them as you're fighting multiple opponents at a time. You know, you got people with spears, people with swords and shields, people with big hulking weapons and people with quicker swords and daggers and stuff like that. And each one, you have a different stance that is better paired up against that type of foe. And when you're getting in a big group of enemies, you got to prioritize and switch between them. And it really forces you to get good at that really quick. On top of that, with archers pegging you with and shooting you with arrows from the distance, this game really throws a lot at you and it really challenges you to be very versatile and use all of your skills to get through these, these overwhelming forces. You have a variety 
of tools at your disposal from kunai to smoke bombs to firecrackers and different little gadgets that you can use to distract enemies and stuff. It's just, there's so many ways that you can approach this. And with the way that you get these charms, which kind of give you different bonuses for different attributes from ranging from stealth to buffing your bow to your knocking speed to damage that you deal out, you can really customize your character and play this game however you want. This game really, I think, is it's challenging my top tier game for the my number one game of the year so far, which for me personally at this point is Final Fantasy VII Remake because, again, that game kind of has a bias for me from the level of detail that went into that game and the nostalgia that comes for me with that. That game kind of has a little bit of an edge. And this game is right there vying right for it. And I don't know. I'm... Right now, I've got more hours in this game than I did in that when I 100%ed Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm still wanting to go back and play this. I, I, I just want to stay in this world. It's just so relaxing. Like, even in the battles, the, fluid, the fluidity of the combat and the way that everything goes, even, like, when things are kind of... When shit's hitting the fan, I still feel kind of relaxed in playing this game. There's only a couple of times where I was like, ah, oh, shit. I'm really kind of getting frustrated here, and but it 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 eased up after a while. And man, it, once you get used to the combat, you get used to all of your different abilities, your tactics, the styles, the defenses. This game has a lot to offer, and I honestly recommend it. I'm not one to play open world games all the way through. I love the concept, and I love immersing myself in a world like from Red Dead to GTA to. Breath of the Wild, Skyrim, I love being in them, mostly for the worlds themselves, but the way my brain works, it's so hard for me to focus in and do what I'm supposed to be doing. I rarely finish these games, but this game made finding everything in the game so rewarding, and so, and just exploring this beautiful landscape was reward enough for me for a lot of it. And you really feel like you're making an impact on this as you liberate town to, from town, unlocking different abilities, meeting new people along the way, as well as well as finding and discovering these mythic tales of these legends of Japanese culture and the island of Tsushima and the lore of the land and finding these legendary armors and unlocking these myths. And it's just... Uh, it's just so good. I highly recommend this game. This game was fantastic, blew all my expectations out of the water. If you haven't played it, check it out. It is worth the price of admission. That's my thoughts on the game. Thank you guys so much for hearing me out. Um, we might revisit this here on the channel. Uh, I might stream it here. I might stream it over on Twitch. I, I'm probably going to go back through it on this new difficulty and just kind of challenge myself at just getting everything again. At least until a new game plus mode is out. But I love this game. Check it out if you want. Uh, and let me know your thoughts on it as well. Sound off in the comments so we can carry on the conversation after the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everybody.